Christopher Davis Sr. Christopher Davis Sr. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, my son, is, Junior, is actually in Germany. It's like, Dad, I need you to record this. Um, many of y'all who don't know me, I worked as a deputy in the Michigan County Sheriff's Department um, many, many years ago, and I stayed, stayed in law enforcement for the last 20 years. Now, okay, what I got to do with this? Cops see domestic violence all the time. However, I'm going to share something with you, and this is kind of thing. This is really the first time I've ever really talked about this publicly. But I also was a person who was abused. Um, at 40 years old, December 21st, 1976, my father almost shot my mother in front of me. So I went through life kind of hating Christmas, you know, because every time around that time of year it would remind me, but I didn't remember it. I just knew something about it bothered me. Um, went forward in life and then I was molested by a family member, put a gun in my head, and said do some things that just kids shouldn't be doing. And at that point, all you know what broke loose. I refused to be abused anymore. Which takes me to my next point in this. I, could, I would love to say I've never hit a woman. I would love to tell you that. I did it once because I was looking down the barrel of a gun. She pointed at me and told me she was going to kill me. We were married, had one child. And when I saw the cylinder on that revolver start to turn and the hammer go back, I realized that, you know, I don't plan on dying today. But after that, it bothered me so much till I blamed myself. I was really just trying to survive. About six months later, I was, uh, I, I started remembering the molestation and the abuse and I, you know, tried to talk, you know, talk about it to my wife and she laughed at me and I snapped. The darkest day of my life was the day I almost killed my child because I lost it. From that point on, that was it. Never again would I strike out at anybody because, you know, the first time with the gun, it was protection. But why did it happen the second time? And so I, I wondered. And I remembered hearing someone say, hurting people hurt others. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to a, a gentleman I arrested for domestic abuse. We arrived at the house, the house was torn in pieces. It looked like a tornado went through it. The young lady was beat beyond recognition. The children had ran in the woods, this was out in the country, because he beat the mother that bad. I said, I told my partner, I will not get off work. I have to work all night till I find this guy. He's going to go to jail. And as we were, took the young lady to a place, safe place on the way back, as he walked out of the woods, in front of the patrol car, it was him. And short story, he took him to jail. No, I didn't beat him up. I know what y'all thinking. I wanted to. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I think he did. But I did. But we, he did have a tongue lash. And when we got to the Richmond County Detention Center, I will never forget what he said. He said, thank you. I said, what? I remember the wife telling me, thank you, at the house where I told us, you, you don't deserve to get beat like this. You don't deserve to be abused. So we got to court, and he thanked me again. He said, thank you for arresting me. I said, what? <laughs> Twilight Zone? I never heard anybody that. <laughs> Thanks for putting me in jail. No, it was, it was like, what? Are you serious? He told me after he pled guilty that he was raised in a house where his dad beat his mom. So he thought it was normal. The wife was raised in a house where her father beat his, her mom. So they thought it was normal. 
And the only reason they dialed 911, or she called 911, was because the children ran away. That was why she called. She didn't call because she got beat up. She called because she was concerned about a child. I realized something from that point. A lot of people who've been abused stay in abusive relationships because that's all they know. They don't know any better. When I went to domestic violence training, the man CDB for a hit by who's in law enforcement, and I remember 23 years old going, what do these people say? That's the dumbest thing I've ever Why would you want to let, let somebody beat you up? 16 years later, I took the same class and broke down crying in front because I said, wow, that was me. Hit by a car, shot at in my own house, poisoned, almost died twice, three times, maybe more. I stopped counting. And never talked about it because I always blamed myself for that one day when the gun was pointed at me and I defended myself. And the thing I say to you, I know I kind of jumped all over the place because I'm trying to keep it down to like under five minutes. But if you know someone who's being abused, it's not enough to tell them to get out. The mindset has to change. Help them. Because see, we see it, but you don't understand the mindset of the person who's being abused. Because, you know, when she shot at me and we went to court, you know, pled guilty, but y'all, she got a mental problem. I made excuses. We had kids. I don't want to put the mother of my children in jail. There were times she would, you know, jump on me and I, I can't fight back, I'm too big. If I hit her, I'm going to jail. So that's not a good look for the police officer. You go in jail for hitting your wife, so I just got to take it. But the mindset was maybe, just maybe, because I saw this all my life, it's wrong. But I knew it wasn't. I was trained to know that it wasn't. And I didn't see myself in the situation. I didn't see that I was the very person who, when I went out on police calls, I was helping. Because it was personal to me. It's, you know, it's just, it's just me. This, you know, this is my life. I can't tell, I can't tell my police buddies that I'm getting my butt beat in the house. I can't, I, I, I can't do that. I can help others, but I couldn't help myself. So I know a lot of you probably know people who've been abused. And you said the same thing I said. Why are you saying it? Why, why don't you just leave? Not that easy. The mind has to change. Their emotions have to change. Because a lot of times they're dependent on the abuser. That's the reason why people who are abusers, they're so nice and lovely. Because they want the emotional dependent of the person that they're abusing. But the issue is most of them have been abused themselves. I know what I'm saying is kind of got y'all like, this nigga really lost his mind. <laughs> no, I'm telling you the truth. If I came up here and just told you that the night I was poisoned or when I was shot, I was, God knows how many times I got hit for no reason. I'd be like, oh. But I want to tell you the truth. People who are in it really need help. They need you to love them, both of them. Why is the person who abuses somebody, why do they do what they do? And on the flip side, why does the other person allow it? We see the what, but we don't look for the why. And that's what I want to tell you. Look for the why. Why do you let him beat you? Man, why, why, why you beat on your wife? What's going on with you? And you will find, like I found that day with that gentleman, he thought he was supposed to. It's sad. And I know here's the thing that I have to say to everyone here. They were trained by their parents to do what they did. 
What are we training our children to do? Are we training our children to disrespect authority? Are we training our children to abuse their spouses verbally, mentally, sexually? What are we training the next generation to do? I want you to think about that. Because children learn a lot more by what they see than what they hear. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for sharing that.